What are the boundaries of the sovereign internet? Human societies are defined by overlapping networks of regular social interactions, whether cultural, economic, or political. Such interactions require agreed-upon predictable rules. Sets of such rules constitute institutions. As interactions become more complex, the institutions must similarly evolve in sophistication. Bitcoin is credited for two significant innovations, both technological and social. An immutable decentralized data structure, known as the blockchain, and an instance of a sovereign monetary institution, the first of its kind, Bitcoin itself. Both represent major advancements in the evolution of the sovereign internet. Then came Ethereum, a general-purpose, immutable virtual machine. Ethereum most notably facilitated the rise of DeFi, or decentralized finance, effectively establishing sovereign financial institutions, from initial offerings to money markets, insurance, and beyond. The sovereign internet is now upheld by a Turing complete platform for contracts, both financial and otherwise. State-of-the-art human-designed organizations are known as states, massively complex organisms requiring developed institutions to function, Realizing the ultimate vision of the sovereign internet means transcending the ground-first paradigm of nations. We have to start cloud-first, self-organize, and design immutable institutions. We empower people to vote out into alternative states. But challenging the status quo of nation-states takes more than independent currency and finance. We need wider and more expressive taxonomies of human interactions than what Web3 currently offers. The next iteration in the evolution of the sovereign internet are social and political institutions, composable, transparent, and immutable. These institutions will enable us to build the new on-chain nations, the cipher states. Let's begin by clarifying our terms. A cipher state refers to an online-first community that is equipped with a set of immutable primitives that are sufficiently robust to replicate and improve upon all key institutions that shape today's nation states including their monetary, economic, political, and social systems. So how could this be achieved? The short answer is Web3 identity, and the longer one awaits in what follows. We'll begin with a seemingly unrelated topic, compliance in Web3. The immutability of most public blockchains comes with the added property of transparency. Transparency of a permissionless ledger would, of course, be a grave security risk to its users had it not been ameliorated by another property of public blockchains, their pseudonymity. Public blockchains are pseudonymous by design. Pseudonymity is the cost we pay for distributed ledgers to be practically viable. Immutability of transactions and pseudonymous network participants have brought a certain notoriety to crypto. Fraud flourishes when there are no consequences to bad actions and when there is no risk of enforcement regulatory, social, or otherwise. There can be no robust compliance in pseudonymous networks. This creates a set of perverse incentives that we as an industry are all too familiar with. Pseudonymity stands as the antithesis to compliance, offering both a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, thanks to it, we have a parallel financial system. On the other hand, it is pseudonymity and its second order effects that are liable for the hypercapitalistic, cutthroat culture that characterizes modern Web3. As it stands, we are isolated from the vast majority of otherwise attainable institutional liquidity and real-world use cases. Can we as an industry honestly claim that Web3 has done more good than harm to the masses of people that we welcome to adopt our stack? Solving for Web3 compliance can create a system that is both more efficient and better regulated than traditional finance, and more liquid and diverse than contemporary crypto. The linchpin to realizing this vision, while also ensuring user privacy, is zero-knowledge technology. So how does compliance relate to the challenge of establishing a cipher state? Well, in fact, these are equivalent problems in that they both have to do with the issue of Web3 identity. AML compliance is a set of processes aimed at collecting certain data points about a real-world identity to ensure adherence to various regulations. Broadening this perspective, what if we consider all data points associated with real-world identities? A set of all attainable data points generated by an identity is one's reputation space. Just to recoup, AML compliance revolves around collecting certain data points linked to a real-world identity. Generalizing this problem, we arrive at one's reputation space, which comprises all such data points. Without reputation, there is no identity. Without identity, there is no social substrate upon which we can create the institutions required to build a cipher state. It all boils down to the issue of identity that goes under the umbrella term civil resistance. Reliable identities generate data points as byproducts of their existence, both online and offline. 
The totality of these data points forms one's reputation space. This space is meaningless if the identities are not reliable, if they are not persistent. Humans regularly use data points to form reputation scores in situations that involve risk, such as granting a loan, hiring an employee, or even choosing a place to eat. Reputation serves as a risk mitigation instrument, providing intertemporal and allocative efficiency to human-created institutions. Similarly, these data points can facilitate connections and social interactions. Individuals often gravitate towards acquaintances with aligned professional goals or beliefs. Reputation, in essence, forms the basic building block of all social institutions and the fabric that ties society together. It is the foundation of social institutions as we know them. Yet reputation requires a stable anchor, a consistent and trustworthy identity. If, in our tangible world, people could instantly change their appearance or credentials, how could trust ever take root? The intertemporal efficiency of social institutions would be greatly eroded. Doesn't it remind you a bit of DeFi as we know it today? Today, identities live in the realm of Web2. They're fragmented and exposed, but it doesn't have to be this way. What if reputation could be persistent, programmable, and yet inherently private? What if identities could be sovereign? A native Web3 social identity, enriched with deep social composability, holds immense promise. It can serve as the bedrock for interoperable, secure, and private AI models and data enclaves. Furthermore, it can pave the way for innovative methods of societal self-organization and governance. In short, native Web3 social identity with rich social composability could yield great progress on broader long-standing problems in Web3 around wealth concentration and vulnerability of governance to financial attacks, while spurring a Cambrian explosion of innovative political, economic, and social applications. So ends the quote from Decentralized Society, web 3 Soul, by Eric Whale, Olja Oliver, and Vitalik Buterin, 2022. While there are functioning DAOs in this ecosystem, the majority have organizational frameworks that don't venture far beyond the basic one-token, one-vote paradigm. Though there are exceptions, their rarity only serves to underscore the norm. Using economic capital as the basis for political coordination is not an adequate substitute for the human-centric primitives that shape our everyday lives. This lack of sophistication can be largely attributed to the inability of token-based models to accommodate more expressive social primitives. In simpler terms, traditional political systems are built around the individual, us, humans. States function as systems allocating resources, with humans at their core. It is their unique human qualities that advance them to positions of power, and it is social institutions that frame the rules of the game. As we see, the crux of it all revolves around unique identities. Imagine if we had a comprehensive toolkit for managing persistent Web3 identities. We could deploy structures like a bicameral parliament, presidential elections, a framework for a federal republic governed by a direct democracy or representative kind, or an autocratic regime like the Communist Party, just as easily as we deploy uniforks. Could we then fine-tune governance models, whether socialistic, capitalistic, or meritocratic, as easily as adjusting a bonding curve? Could we establish an academy of sciences or a sovereign fund and shape the judiciary, executive, and legislative branches to our liking? The endgame of the sovereign internet is a misty region, and the concept of cipher states is the lantern by which what before was dimly visible now looms up in firm, bold outlines. It is there where the future lies, but it will only materialize with the advent of native Web3 identities, standardized, holistic, yet privacy-preserving representations of humans in protocols shaping the cipher space. Ghosts in the chain. It is with this background that we proudly present to you Galactica.com.